research and innovation in Futuris. New technologies are blurring the boundaries between the real and the virtual worlds. The brain can control a machine and even perceive it as its own body. Can that improve our lives? Barcelona University, scientists are working on a European research project to link a human brain to a robot using skin electrodes and video goggles so that the user feels that they are actually in the android body wherever it is in the world. In virtual reality we present you with uh, 3D cues that are of some other space and inside of that space when you look down you see you have a body and you see that it interacts you feel that this virtual representation that I see is my body to a certain extent. And this is interesting because the, the brain actually accepts this in some sense as your body. The electrodes measure brain impulses, okay. enabling a person to control the robot's actions without moving their own limbs. The idea is to enable severely disabled people to enter the world via a real-life avatar. The actions are associated with squares that are flashing with different frequencies and the operator can trigger an action by simply focusing attention on one of the squares. The frequency of the flashing will be reproduced in the brain's visual cortex so we can detect which square the operator is looking at. giving an I don't know kind of gesture. The computer is trained to recognize certain signals that their brain gives out and those signals have particular meanings like one signal might mean move your arm, another signal might mean move the other arm, another signal might mean move forward and so on. So the idea is that the uh, the person with a disability is back in the world in a physical sense of being able to interact with people, move around and so on, even though in reality they may be in bed or sitting down somewhere in a wheelchair and so on. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. <laughs> Using a remote avatar, anyone can travel without leaving home. But to make the experience feel more realistic, several senses need to work together. Here we have a stereo camera filming in 3D, a sensor to record the head's vibrations and angular velocity, and a double microphone to capture 3D sound. un doppio microfono per una registrazione audio in tre dimensioni. In this laboratory in Pisa, scientists are testing a chair that vibrates in time with 3D video playback, recreating some of the physical aspects of walking. In this remote walking experiment, we've integrated into the embodiment station a sort of vestibular feedback, a perception of momentum as recorded using sensors during the real walking. deeper immersion into the virtual world becomes possible with robotic exoskeletons that simulate physical interactions and with advanced 3D projection systems. Nella embodiment stations noi intendiamo the finalized embodiment station will provide a rich sensorial experience, including vestibular stimulation, a sense of touch, visual and auditive feedback, to fully recreate the feeling of being in another body, of a virtual avatar or of a robot in a real environment. 
o un corpo virtuale, quando uno eh, si muove in un ambiente virtuale, o un, un corpo eh, quale quello di un robot che interagisce con un ambiente reale. Touching virtual objects, feeling their texture and weight, will make the digital world more natural and easier to live in. But what if virtual models could change the real world, making it more accessible? That's the goal of another European project involving hundreds of disabled people in several countries. We're happy to participate in this project with our scientist friends. This research helps us to understand the needs of disabled people and to make more products that simplify our lives. Scientists use cameras and sensors to study how physically impaired people move, getting a better idea of their average physical limitations. We are measuring motor parameters. We try to model the way people can move their limbs, uh, their hand, their foot, uh, how much they can bend the knees or the hips. Uh, in order to create a statistical model on how people from with dif different disabilities, let's say people that have Parkinson's or, or that had the stroke or even elder people, how they move. The data is used to simulate how motor impaired people cope with various tasks, such as opening the glove compartment in a car. As you can see, this is where they need to go, but this is how far they can bend their back due to the problems they have. So the simulation fails at this point. With these models, industrial designers will know in advance how safe and convenient their new products are, and can adapt them better for users with physical limitations. The main outcome of the project is uh, the creation of the virtual user models which can be used by other uh, companies or uh, SMEs or other projects uh, to uh, test their developments, test their designs and get an evaluation of the accessibility. Seeing the screen through the eyes of someone with advanced glaucoma, using the mouse as a person with tremors makes it easier to understand other people's physical challenges helping us move towards a world without limits.